the tape measure, measure 51 inches of cable. Next, using the marker, place a mark at 51 inches. This will be the original ring cut location. Make sure that the ring cutter is set to a depth that will not cut the buffer tube portion of the cable. Starting at the original ring location, turn the ring cutter around the cable just enough to score the cable's jacket. Place your gloved hand at the bottom of the 3 inch section. Now use the razor knife to cut each side of the micro core cable. Begin the cut at the 3 inch mark and cut towards the end of the cable. This procedure will allow access to the rip cords within the cable. Once both cuts have been made, remove the cut proof glove. Now you will need to peel back both sides of the cable jacket. Firmly grasp and pull one strand of the ripcord until you have reached the original ring cut mark. Now that the jacket has been accessed, peel off the outer material to the ring cut location and remove it. Always leave approximately 4 inches of ripcord to use again if needed. Cut the binders at the point closest to the outer microcore jacket. Do not damage the buffer tube while cutting the binders. Pull and remove the binders from around the cable's buffer tubes. Use the scissors to cut off any excess binder material at the ring cut location. First, cut and remove the first three inches of cable that was used to access the microcore rip cords. Next, unwind the buffer tubes off of the FRP rod. Finally, cut and remove the FRP rod leaving three to four inches to be secured within the splice closure. After separating the buffer tubes, prepare and mark the buffer tubes at the location where they will enter the splice tray. With the use of a buffer tube cutter, cut and remove each section at its previously marked location. Each one of the buffer tubes should be removed in approximately 24 inch sections. Once the buffer tube removal process is complete, leave the protective gel on the fiber surface to help with the binder separation process. In order to separate the two groups of fibers, you will need to locate the binder group inside the bundle. In order to perform this task, a fiber cleaning solution is used to clean approximately 4 to 6 inches of all 24 fibers closest to the buffer tube. This method will expose and separate the binders for easy access. The outside plant 144 microcore cable consists of two groups of fibers. The first fiber group contains fibers 1 through 12, which can be identified by the blue binder around them. The second fiber group contains fibers 13 through 24, which have no binder. 48 and 72 fibers are found in the other microcore designs. Locate both binders and slightly tug on them until you can separate each group of fibers. Once the groups have been identified, count the number of fibers in each group and identify the color code before separating the entire length. Using the blue binder group, fibers 1 through 12, cut the binders and perform a half hitch loop around the fiber group approximately six times to identify the group. Make sure not to pull the binder loops too tightly. Add 
As an additional method for identifying the fibers, leave the first 12 fibers at their full length and remove an inch of fiber from the second remaining group of fibers. This method can be used as a backup to the binder identification method. Continue to clean the fibers using a certified fiber cleaner. Use a Kim wipe in the cleaning process to ensure the fibers are clean and free of debris before installing them into your splice tray.